A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Mesodechic. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he, heard, he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Mezteldezchek. Word of God, word of life. God who created everything, all the untold universes swirling above us and the firm, nurturing earth under our feet, God is almost incomprehensible. How should you or I, mere creatures, come to wrap our heads around God? let alone befriend God. We are but specks of dust, physically tiny, as well as limited to the narrowest segment of time. Compared to God, God who as creator is greater than the entire creation put together. God, who lives outside of time, experiencing past, present, and future as but one everlasting moment. Honestly, I don't think that you or I would even conceive of the idea that we could befriend God that is, if God hadn't told us that this was the plan. That we were created, put on this earth, for a relationship with God. No, we aren't here on earth as some long-lasting soap opera to entertain the divine majesty. No, God made us with a purpose. God wants us to use the divine image that all of us bear, not only to love one another and to build a beautiful world, but in addition to these things, to know God and be known by God. God wants to know us. Know our hopes and our dreams and our fears. Know our specific gifts and how we will use them to create a world that gets us closer step by step to God's hoped for future. There's just one problem, though. How do we, temporal creatures of dust, get up to God's eternal and spiritual dwelling place? In the ancient world, they had a solution to this problem. They would identify one person, the high priest, who would go between God and humanity. The high priest was expected to live an exemplary life, a life that was pure and sinless. The high priest was expected to be from the right family, preferably with a father who had himself been high priest. The high priest's most important role was to make an offering to atone for the sins of the people. Not every day or every week, just once a year, on the Day of Atonement. In today's second reading, the author of Hebrews makes an audacious claim that Jesus 
is the ultimate high priest. That is to say, Jesus is the one, the only one, who can connect us to God's being. Jesus is the one who can stand in the gap between a time-bound human race and a timeless God. Jesus is the one who can stand between the physical creation and the spiritual creator. Jesus is the one who can stand between a sinful humanity and a perfect divinity. Jesus is the ultimate mediator, in part because he was appointed to this high priestly office on account of his familial connections. Hebrews tells us that Jesus is high priest because he is God's own son. The author of Hebrews goes yet further. Unlike all other high priests, this author says, Jesus' role as intercessor has been proven effective. Because Jesus, while he walked on this earth, offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, just like any intercessor would. But that begs the question, what did Jesus ask for? As we walk with Jesus toward his passion, we naturally think of his prayer in the garden. Father, take this cup from me. Or maybe we think of Jesus' plaintive cry from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I don't think that this is what Hebrews is talking about here. Because we read that God heard Jesus' prayers and granted them on account of Christ's reverent submission. God heard Jesus' loud cries and tears. What cry, then, should we assume was heard? Well, what else did Jesus cry out with tears and groaning? How about, Father, forgive them? This is the prayer of a high priest. Father, forgive them. This is the prayer of someone who stands right in front of God on humanity's behalf. Father, forgive us. For instead of placing gold investments on Jesus, your eternal high priest, we gave him a crown of thorns. Father, forgive us. For instead of learning obedience from Jesus, we remained disobedient. Father, forgive us. For instead of seeking your way of life, we stayed on the path of death. The path of death for one another by hoarding resources, harming your creation, and remaining in willful ignorance. But also the path of death for Jesus. Death on a cross. Fortunately, this isn't the end of the story. Humankind and its death lust have not won. Hebrews tells us that Jesus' prayers and supplications were so strong, so powerful, that God could not let our human injustice stand. Even as God forgave us through Christ's loud cries and groanings, God had to right the underlying wrong. God could not let 
the perfect Son, the eternal High Priest, stay dead. So the Father raised Jesus, raised him from death to life. In doing so, God affirmed yet again who Jesus is, our everlasting high priest. Jesus is the one who straddles that great divine. Jesus is the intercessor between humankind and God. Jesus is the bridge between death and life. Jesus is the transition between time and eternity. So, if we want God, life, and eternity... The path runs straight through Jesus. Straight through his loud cries and supplications. Father, forgive them. Amen.